Hey folks, my name is Henry Kuta, I'm the director of films such as Babysitter Massacre and Alone in the Ghost House, and you are watching Mr. Tony of the Dead. Hey everybody, what's going on? Mr. Tony of the Dead here, and I have another video with a bunch of Blu-ray reviews for everybody out there. And uh, the first thing I'm going to show everybody is from Mill Creek Entertainment, and these are two, uh, like, mixed... Uh, tapes not tapes but you know mixed things on here this is a it's called shark bait and six killer shark films plus a bonus seventh bite to sink your teeth into and this is a dvd and uh this is um all sharks except for one the last one the extra one's alligator alley and it has a uh, you know it's on two discs and uh they are region one so you got that from mill creek and the other one here is part of the 90s thing in it and it's a uh, mo money in high school high so it's like a comedy double pack i remember mo money being really funny with uh uh damon waynes is that the right one marlon waynes sorry marlon waynes i knew that was not right when i said it marlon waynes i remember that being funny back in mo money mo money mo money you know uh that was funny back in the day and high school high is kind of like a spoof kind of like off of a, uh, it's like naked gun dangerous minds kind of thing i remember uh where there was like a guy you know, in that in the trailer had um, like like his, the way his hair was, and there was like micro machines going around in his hair. It was really weird. It was like supposed to be like a you know a bad high school, and he's the principal, and they they wanted him. He wanted him to play one of his songs at the dance, and they put on like like a rhinestone cowboy, and then they started like like scratching it with the record, and then they all got into it, and like it ruined his record. But it was like supposed to be you know rare, but uh. So yeah, that was John Lovitz and Tia Carrera in that one. But that was fun. This is a this is a fun pack, you know, dull pack, no special features or anything. Region A. So that is that one. But like I said, this shark one, it has uh, six shark movies on here. And then the extra bite is Alligator Alley. And the shark movies you get are Ghost Shark, Mississippi River Sharks, Ozark Sharks, Santa Jaws, Swamp Shark, and Zombie Shark. And then, like I said, Alligator Alley. Um, and they're ridiculous, you know, they're the ridiculous type movies. Ghost Shark is probably the best one on here, if you, in my opinion. And uh, Zombie Shark was, was pretty fun as well, I would say. Those are probably the best ones on here, I would say. Uh, Ghost Shark has, uh, you know, uh, Sean C. Phillips in, on here. And, um, you know, some, some other familiar faces in it. But uh, it, was, it was Sean C. Phillips when he was like, you know, you know, before he lost all the weight and uh but it was it was still it's a fun movie uh, a lot of good scenes especially the slip and slide with when the kids are going in and at the end was like this fake shark and then like the ghost shark came and took the kid out with you know it was uh i remember seeing it back when it was on tv and then now that's on here you know i always wanted to get it on the blue on blu-ray and you know here i never did and now it's on here it's a cool pack too it also now with Mill Creek they have this thing called movie spree and I know I said in the past that they don't have like a a thing where you can um like they have like the instant codes that not the instant code like the digital codes and that where you can watch this stuff um and it was only on their website well now they have this thing called movie spree where you can actually it's like an app thing I, th I believe you still go and you put it on their website I'm not sure exactly how it works I didn't actually do it but now it's downloadable on like a lot of different things. Yeah, it says here you can download uh, on the Roku, Amazon, App Fire TV, Google Play, and the, and the uh, Apple App Store. You know, um, so you can download Movie Spree, and you can watch your movies on those. So you know you don't have to just go to their website. You can do that, and now you can watch it on an app on your Amazon TV, which is awesome because. You know, that's how I'd rather watch it, instead of having to go to their website, you know, watch on my laptop. I'd rather watch, because that's how I watch everything, you know, like that, on my TV, you know, unless it's a physical media. But, uh, you know, and I still would rather physical media, you know, I, I still would rather this, but, you know, hey, if you have the, the digital and you want to watch it, there it is. But, yeah, so that's, uh, that's this one from, from Mill Creek, and like I said, it's two discs, and it's just plain, I uh, can't show you the codes don't ask but uh 
there's a disc and there's the other disc there just plain black with the names on it so pretty cool and and you know that that's you know just one of the multi packs that they have so that's pretty cool so there that's Mill Creek Entertainment next up I have here from Blue Underground is the New York Ripper and this is the 4k resolution here and uh, this is you know blu-ray dvd and the compact disc and if you could see here it's kind of it, it's it's like a lenticular cover but it's more 3d-ish than it doesn't it doesn't really change it's more 3d-ish you can't really see it i'm i'm just gonna stop because that glare is horrible but um anyway this is from lucio fulci and i'm gonna take that cover off right now because that's gonna it might not even be any better with it off but yeah so there you go this is Lucio Fulci and uh, what this is about it's about this killer that's going around New York and uh, you know he's killing people and the, the odd thing is has this like duck voice whenever he talks he's like um, talking to the police and in this like almost like a Donald Duck voice and um, it's very very weird it's very strange because this is the first time I've ever seen it and that kind of threw me off I was like what the fuck because it has some really cool gore and you know really cool scenes you know New York back in uh, what was it 19 um, it, it says 82 but I, I don't know if that was the right year for this but um, you know but it, it's it's back from back in the day when New York was it was very very dirty looking back in the day I don't know what it is with New York back in the day I mean nowadays it's it's a lot cleaner you know the subway systems are a lot cleaner um, there's no graffiti in that and at least from what I could see I don't live in New York or anything but um, it's just like they really did a lot to clean up New York and just back then everything was dirty there's like garbage in the streets the subway system was just all graffitied up and it was just like it seemed a lot more dangerous I'm not saying it's not dangerous now but um, but like it was this movie was wasn't bad it was it's not my favorite Lucio Fulci movie to be honest but uh, I didn't mind it the ending was a uh, it was kind of predictable to be honest uh, but but I, I liked it and and the reason why everything was going on was kind of you know understandable I guess I could say but yeah the first time I've ever seen this and you know this isn't the first time this is released by Blue Underground um, they they also had it on like a you know this is like, like I said three disc edition I believe there was a two disc and other people have put this out so I don't know if you really need to upgrade if you if you want to upgrade because there are extras on here but a lot of the extras are still from like 2009 like they show New York from from then to now but now is 2009 so that's already like 10 years old so uh, I mean you want the soundtrack you want to update and you get the 4k resolution it does look really nice and it is a decent movie and you know it's a, it is a pretty cool like you know who who's doing this um, and all around New York it's not like where some of the movies like um, you know Italian movies are some scenes are shot in New York and then that's it like the rest aren't in New York at all this is like pretty much like it's all all in New York but um yeah I, I, th I thought this was pretty good I definitely think it's worth a watch and again it's out for a long time 4k looked nice um, but yeah as far as Special features, it was kind of kind of depressing, not depressing, but like upsetting because, uh, you know, I was hoping for some newer stuff, and there really, really don't think there was any, um, anything really new, because it was all like 2009, 2009, so it's really just an upgraded edition to like an older edition of this that they put out, but I mean, it is a nice edition, I really like what Blue Underground does, but do you really need to upgrade probably not you know I mean I don't know what the blu-ray looks like but if you don't have it you know get this then you get the cool lenticular cover so now I'll show you what's inside like I said you get this cool lenticular cover and it's more of a 3d ish instead of like like uh, you know kind of like maniac was a little 3d ish and then like the zombie ones are are lenticular but they have things going on like things going into eyes and like people walking over bridges and like 
you know that that's an awesome looking cover i wish they would do something with with this it, it kind of like doesn't do anything it doesn't do anything at all which is a shame and then you have this artwork here and then on the inside you can reverse the artwork and put that one to be honest i kind of like this one better i don't know the other one's not bad it's just i kind of like this one with her laying there with the city and then the knife over top of it pretty cool and then the uh reverse side is a little different you got oh there it is you got uh like this picture over here oh my god i can't even tell right there it's a little different and so is this and so oh my god i can't do this <laughs> on this side is a little different is a different picture that i should say than on this side but there are the extras and if you want to pause right now you can check them out you can so yeah i like the movie definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it before and but worth upgrading from like a previous version i wouldn't say it had to um this is the only version i have so i'm happy with it so uh but i would actually like to see this on vhs so i think it would be pretty cool to see this all gritty and you know because new york's so dirty back then it'd be kind of cool to watch it even dirtier <laughs> on a vhs tape but yeah it definitely uh had some really cool kills cool blood gore good story but uh, i you know first time watching it i enjoyed it you know for what it was so yeah that's uh the new york ripper next up i have from vinegar syndrome this is night beast and this is directed by don Dooler or doler not really sure how to say it but this is about this this alien who kind of like crash lands on earth and basically has this ray gun and starts killing everybody in town and basically the town's gonna like trying to stop this alien from you know killing everybody and when the everybody get when somebody gets shot kind of like has this outline around them and they kind of like turn like this sparkly kind of thing and then like there's an outline on them on the ground it's a very powerful weapon but i mean that's basically all it is they don't know what this thing is but all they know is it's killing people and they're trying to stop it and it's a really low budget like ridiculous movie i never seen it before um Troma had something to do with it. They, they, uh, I guess distributed it or something or, or had their hand in it. Again, they, they have a, the Troma thing in the beginning, and I don't really know if does if that means that Troma, like, you know, put it out on their line or or if they, I, I guess that's what that means. Like, or did Troma make it? I don't think they. I don't. I, I guess they just like you know it's on their line of movies but um you know i always wanted to get this because i've seen a vhs of it and um you know i always want to see it because it seemed like rare you know ish and then uh, vinegar syndrome was putting it out and it was part of their uh, halfway to black friday sale and it was um like one of the i think this was part of the mystery one because i i yeah it had to be because um well anyway i got it with, with the mystery thing and I was like, oh, cool, you know, now I get to see it, and I finally watch it, and, and it's pretty cheesy, it's pretty low budget, um, you know, but it was laughable, it's it's kind of a fun time, it's not really a good movie, you know, There, the, the acting is pretty horrendous in it, um, but, you know, you can't take it seriously, the alien looks pretty cool, um, and the guy, there's a scene, like, in the beginning, he's just, there's like, it must be an endless amount of ammo in this gun, just continuously shooting, but nobody, nobody can shoot anything in this movie, except for the, him, but of course he has unlimited ammo, so he's going to hit somebody sometime, but nobody can hit him, nothing, they can't even really hit the tree that he's hiding behind, or the ground in front of him, they just like, they're just firing and firing, they can't hit him, and it was like so ridiculous, and then there's just the one guy that takes aim for ever and then they shoot him shoot at him and hits the gun and that and finally like somebody hits him it was it was like just took forever but like yeah it was not a good movie um but it was fun you know it was a fun cheesy sci-fi movie it's it was like i said bad acting um but there was some 
bad, cool, practical effects. Like, I do like how they, they when somebody got shot with a gun and there was that outline, and then it's like sparkling. This almost reminds you of like when they, um, you know, a trans uh, not transported, but a teleported in Star Trek, how it looked like that. It almost kind of looked like that, but like, you know, intensified. And then this, like, they're, they're, burnt marks on the ground that was kind of cool that was kind of cool looking um so but like the beginning of the ship and it crash landed it looked so bad it looked so cheap like it was obviously like a fake ship and obviously like a model like landing and i, I was like it was pretty bad so like right when i saw that i knew i was this was either going to be a great film or it was going to be incredibly horrible and it was kind of somewhere in the middle but you know there was some familiar faces well i should say some there was one familiar face in this uh and i don't remember his name but he's been in stuff that i've seen nowadays from uh some friends of mine that put movies out um like chris lamartina had him in some movies uh i think um i can't remember somebody else had him in a movie recently yeah killer camp out he was just in um but he was in this he was one he was a the scientist one of the scientists and it was like a young, it was him because this is from I believe like 1981, I think it was 1981, and and it was just, it was, well I just can't believe like what people might have thought like back then like, and then like you see this behind the scenes in that, and um, how they they reacted to it and they actually the whole crew almost quit because of this one guy that was doing doing things he wanted to get this one shot that took like 10 hours. And I don't even think they got it. So then they all went up to the director and told him, like, either he goes or we go. And so that guy, he didn't get fired, but he kind of, like, like he's like, no, this isn't for me. So he quit before he got fired. But uh, it was just, it was almost not made. And um, this is from the same guy that did Alien Factor and Fiend. And the funny thing is, I have Fiend. I believe Massacre Video put it out. Um... And I, if that's the same one, but I've never watched that. I haven't watched it yet. I don't know what I, what made me hesitate. So now I kind of know what maybe I'm getting into. I don't know what's better. I've never seen Alien Factor though, but I do want to see the director's other things. And I do have like interviews on here with, uh, you know, the cast and crew, like, like a couple people nowadays. Even like the kids in here, I believe they were the director's kids, or or the, his son was it was something like that, and um. He was like in the car with the uncle, uh, him and his sister, and he talked to him nowadays, and he looks exactly the same. You know, you could tell it's that kid. He's just tall. He's obviously older. It's like you know, uh, thirty-eight years old later or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was, it was um something else, you know. But I'm glad I got to see it. But now I'll show you what's in here. So yeah, I got this with this cool slip cover. Very very neat. On the back, you got that. This is, if you can see, that's a little shiny. It's, it's, it's raised. It's embossed, and it's a little, little smooth. You know, very smooth. And this, this is a little bit raised, and it has, and this is like a shininess there. I don't know what that would be called. It's just glossiness, I guess. And you raise it up, and you have that underneath. You have that cover. So yeah, like I said, you have this cover here, and then you could reverse it. And you can put up this cover. And this kind of reminds you of like a 50s kind of like um, artwork. You know, something like you would see. This movie definitely reminds you of something that you would watch at like a drive-in. Like, or don't watch at the drive-in. You go to it, it's playing, and you're making out with somebody in the back seat. Kind of like that kind of movie that would be playing. Or like a movie that would be playing while you're watching a movie while they're watching it in the movie. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, you got that. So you could put either one. I don't know. I, I this one, it's okay. I kind of like this one. It's different, but I I do like the, how the the slip cover is diff. You know, you got kind of like four different images, so that's pretty cool. And there are the special features. If you want to pause it now and check them out, you can. And then here you have the DVD and the Blu-ray. Blu-ray with you know a different artwork on than this one, which is cool. I like that they did that. Again, everybody knows how I feel about the whole blu-ray and dvd in here but they are region a b and c so yeah not really a good movie but you know it's fun it has its moments it's cheesy it's a bad movie is it a good bad movie 
eh, I don't know. You know, watch it and, and you know, judge for yourself. But it did look good, sound and good, and you know, I'd watch it again. To be honest, I would watch again. It was it was bad, but I'd watch it again. It was fun, and uh, you know, maybe if you were in the right mind, it would be even better. That's all I'm saying. But that's Night Beast. Next up I have here from Henrik Kuto, this is his brand new movie, and this is Haunting Inside, and what this is about, it's about this girl and uh, her brother, and the girl is kind of like, um, you know, she has these issues, she has these mental issues, uh, she's agoraphobic, you know, she's, she's a very sweet girl, but she she's kind of like uh, childish in a way, you know, she's not she's an adult but she's uh she's not all there i guess you could say and uh she has no friends like i said she don't go outside her, her only friend really is her brother and his girlfriend you know sorta and uh, she sees a therapist in that and she likes to play games she likes board games all these kind of games her brother uh brings home a bunch of these different kind of games and one of the games is you know a ouija board or, or uh Ouija board and uh, she decides she you know she's gonna start playing it by herself so she starts playing it and nothing's happening and then you know okay one one time she starts uh, finding some new friends that you know her brother doesn't know about and you know these friends seem really cool but they have these other plans in mind for her and uh, it just goes from there so it's a pretty um, kind of like wild ride after that uh, you know it, it because they you you know there's they're kind of sinister they like you watching it realize that there's more to them than what they seem to her you know but she's like childlike so she doesn't really understand she just is happy to have friends and she's you know in a good mood she she cooks for her brother she was like for the beginning of the movie she she was cooking for him and, and she always like uh would cook things that like would wouldn't work out right or was horrible and you know he he like would like oh i like it or you know but you know he would eat it for her sake and then finally one of them was one of the uh, her new friends were uh helping her cook so she starts making like these newer meals for her brother and like they were terrific and everything and she's just saying she's watching a cooking show and you know yeah, I, I don't want to give away the ending, obviously, but uh, it 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 was a it was a good movie. I, I legitimately really enjoyed this movie. Um, definitely, out of all of Henrik's uh, movies, this is my second favorite one of his, and um, I I did enjoy it. The uh, acting, you know, was good. I, I that's probably some of the best acting I've seen in his films. Um, very cool. There was no nudity. Which I was surprised. There's usually at least one one uh, pair of naked breasts in his movies, or something, and there wasn't. And I'm not saying that makes a good movie um, at all. I'm not saying that. I'm just uh, usually there is something like that, and there wasn't any in this. And uh, and it's funny because I was waiting for it, but I wasn't upset that there wasn't. I'm really going on too much about the boobs, but um, yeah, it it was a. Uh, it was a good movie. I, I enjoyed it because there's a lot of like you know ghost stories and and that kind of stuff. It's like the same kind of shit. And um, you know, even though you know that they're kind of you know they have other things in mind, you don't know how exactly it's going to play out at the end. And I thought this had a really really good ending. And uh, I definitely would watch this again. Like I said, second my second favorite one of his movies. Uh, the other favorite of mine of his. Um, isn't even like a ghost one or or um, you know horror movie so I guess of, of his like ghost or horror movies this is my favorite one you know um, he you know if you don't know who he is he does like babysitter massacre devil's trail um, you know a haunted house on sorority row also scare waves alone in the ghost house you know stuff like that uh, I'm a supporter of his uh, he even does westerns uh, calamity Jane I uh, can't remember the whole title but uh he does like those things too and i always support everything he does and there are things that aren't as good as others you know i wouldn't say they're bad but like they're not as good as others and i probably wouldn't want to put them in right away or you know 
have the urge. But this one I, I thought was a good story and, and I did enjoy it. And uh, my, my wife watched it with me as well. And I always, after watching a movie with her, I always turn to her because she's like more of a critic than I am. Because she's very honest. I'm honest, but she's like, eh, you know, like she's like, there's a thin line between like, whether she likes something or doesn't. And, and uh, I'll say like, so what'd you think? And she'll go, I liked it. You know, she, I go, yeah, me too. You know, it was, I was like honestly shocked because it, 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 it's always like a, like a, you know, you, like a pitch an idea to like a company or something. And you're like, so what do you guys think? We like it, you know, so you never know with her. And uh, she liked it, and I and I, I was glad that she liked it because I liked it too. I, and I like when we both like the same things, which is you know why we're together because we pretty much do like all a lot of the same things. But um, you know, in this was uh, Joni Durian and uh, John Hambrick. They played together. They also played together in Alone in the Ghost House. Um, they played together in other things as well, like a lot of the you know Hendrick uses a lot of. The, the same people in this and um you know but they worked well together uh brother and sister she she uh Joni did a really good job like really honestly like compared to her other roles that she's done in the past um this one stand out, stands out i would say so she did a really good job i thought every, everything was good in this movie i enjoyed it um yeah th this one you could i mean there was some cursing but it could pretty much um, uh, play on TV, you know, you could play it, you know, uh, whatever. I don't know, I, I'm just saying, like, anybody could watch this movie, I think, and, and would like it. I enjoyed it, and I'm not just saying that because my name is in the special thanks at the end, because I, I, I bought the movie, and then watching at the end, there's my name, and I was like, oh shit, I forgot about that. Like, I knew I was getting the movie in, but I totally forgot that, that was one of the things to, you know, to do it. But... But yeah, so haunting inside, and now I'll show you what's inside of the haunting inside disc case. And here you have it says limited edition Blu ray and DVD combo. And there it says to Mr. Tony of the Dead, want to play, and then signed by a Dr. Henry Koto. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's how I sign my uh, Walmart grocery. Like, just like that. But, uh, you know, there you go. Yeah, that's Joni on there. And uh, she loves to play games. And then you got the back here. Very cool. And here you have the DVD and a Blu-ray. And I'm not sure what uh, they are. They may be region free. I'm not 100% sure. But you can go to his shop. I'll put a link below and you can check them out if you want to purchase it. One thing I forgot to mention about Sylvia's new friends uh, is that the interesting choice of characters that they were uh, that they, you know, uh, Hendrick chose to make them. And I'm not going to say what, because I want people to see the movie and and not be prepared for, uh, especially the, um, I can't even say it without giving it away. Um, but it was very interesting. Um, can't even, like, try to make a pun to try to get it, but it very punk rockish, you know, if I'm saying. That was uh, kind of crazy. Uh, decision and in a good way you know it was kind of like wow that's great like I, the whole time I was just thinking uh, she's gonna stab somebody with that but there is uh, uh, also on the extras there's a commentary uh, and a short film stirring which I haven't watched and then there's a trailer in the vault and more uh, I, I I haven't seen I haven't listened to the commentary which I should go back and because I'd like to hear his reasons why he chose some of the things that he did in the movie but yeah i'd say definitely check this one out i had a a good time watching it i don't know why i say that it's weird kind of saying i had a good time watching it like i was sitting there like but like you know what i mean i had i i enjoyed the movie you know i enjoyed the movie and i think a lot of people will too so you know that's haunting inside next up i have here from arrow video usa is the loveless and this is written and directed by Catherine Bigelow and Monty Montgomery and what this is about it's about this guy named Vance and his friends who are like this biker gang kind of guys and uh, this one girl and they're heading on their way down to Daytona for like these races these bike races and uh, they stop in this kind of like little very little town 
and uh, you know they're they're kind of like they're very much the outcast because they're like this they're not a gang but they are a gang and they're bikers and you know they're kind of harmless but unless you cross them and uh, you know everybody just looks at them as you know hoodlums and uh, communists and stuff like that and they're just kind of there just trying to get their bikes fixed and on their way down and Vance ends up um, you know meeting this one girl who is like a stock car racer and has daddy issues and it goes from there Vance is played by um, by William Defoe and I gotta say, William Defoe, he's a very good actor. I'll tell you. Like I, I and I like this movie. It's kind of a weird movie, especially like the ending is kind of strange. But like everybody in the, it seems like in the movie they they didn't like them, but they wanted to be them. And it kind of like um, it came out in uh, 1981, and everybody liked. Um, not sure. 1981. Everybody like um, was like in the like the 50s in this movie, and I, I believe it was the 50s. They never actually said what year it was, but it kind of looked like the 50s. And the town was like this. Like I said, it's like this little fucking town, and there was hardly anybody. It was like everybody worked. At the end of the day, they went to the bar, and the t they of uh, the gang like they didn't really want any trouble and some people gave them trouble and they just were were themselves they like they constantly smoked cigarettes they were uh you know just a gang but William Defoe like the, the beginning of the movie kind of kind of gets you hooked because he's just driving down the road I think it was originally called US 71 I think the movie was called gonna be called and he's driving on the road and he sees like this uh car on the side of the road like you know needs some help so he goes over and just the way he talks and his mannerism it's like Ooh, what what is he because you don't really know what he's about is he is he gonna rob her is he gonna you know rape her or is he gonna kill her what's he gonna do to this woman and you know he ends up like fixing her tire for her and and then he he like um he's like he wants something for it so she gives him like two dollars so then he takes her wallet takes the rest of the money out and then like he knows she's attracted to him he like grabs his giant kiss off her and she like you could tell she like gives into it while he's feeling her up and she's just was like oh, you know like oh my god and he walks away and you hear him like laughing because he knows she loved it and I mean maybe it's not very you know good but you know she just was afraid of him but yet she wanted him I don't know it was like you have to see the part but it was like right then it was like wow what the hell else is gonna happen what is this guy about I gotta see this. I gotta watch the rest of this movie. But man, what a movie! Uh, I I I never heard of this before, but uh, I I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. And this was back before uh, William Defoe even had an agent. So they the movie though they they got paid like very little, and um, it was just it was way back in the day, you know, like before he was even like a big somebody. And in the special edition. It was like a, they talk to like some of them nowadays, and one guy is kind of like I didn't know who he was until the end of the interview. Like I didn't know he was actually one of the guys in it, even though he kept saying like when they were filming or at this part. Like I still was like, which one were you? Like who were you in the movie? I, I didn't know who he was, but he really changed. But then the one one guy in the movie, in the interview, looks exactly the same, just older. Like he just looks like an older version of his younger self. You know, the same sideburns, same slicked back hair, uh, same kind of, well, he didn't have glasses back then, but he just had, it was just the same guy. You know, that, like, how he was, that was how he was back then, that's how he really was. That's how he was in the interview, and that's how he was nowadays. Like, that's how, uh, and William Defoe, they, they talked to him, and of course, everybody knows what he looks like now. Kind of looks like this on the cover, but with a big beard, and, you know, he's older. But, uh. It pretty much probably weighs the same amount. I don't know, but I don't know. It was just like William Defoe is just something, especially his facial features and uh, you know his facial expressions. I mean, like you could just tell what he's thinking. Sometimes, like he looks evil. He can look evil. He when he's happy, he's genuinely happy. You could see it, and it it's just 
the guy's all over the place and he's just he was just so good at this movie like he's very likable very like all the whole gang was likable and they're not I guess they're not really supposed to be the town people the townsfolk were actually the ones that you don't like and and at least for me and I, I think uh, they're maybe the towns the loveless ones because they definitely weren't the gang wasn't but uh yeah i i like this movie i i would definitely watch this again i had a lot of i i again i remember going again i'm gonna say i had a lot of good time a lot of fun with it but i enjoyed the movie i would watch it again look good and sounded good so now i'll show you the inside and here's the newly commissioned artwork by giles vran i don't know if i'm, I'm probably not saying that right but i like that that's not too bad you know very well in your face William Defoe-ish, you know, and then here's the original artwork. That's very, uh, you know, greaser, 50s kind of movie looking. So, you know, that one represents, I think, the movie more. But the movie is more about him. So I like, I like either one, to be honest. Um, I think this looks more like William Defoe than that does. But, I don't know, I like either one, to be honest. And there you have the special edition contents. If you want to pause it now and check them out, you can. And on the inside here, you have a booklet and a Blu-ray, and it is Region A. And here you have the front cover of the booklet. You know, I like that cover. I like that old, you know, that kind of tattoo. Not a thick booklet. You know, it has some things in here. Contents, you know, picture story about the restoration, production credits, and there is the back. So yeah, if you haven't seen this movie, I'd say check it out. Um, it might not be for everyone. It's not a horror movie, um, but I think it's a decent story. I was honestly, when I was reading the bag, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to like this. You know, I didn't really want to watch it. And it took me days to put it in the Blu-ray player and to watch it. And, and I, I, was I was surprised. I don't know what that word is. I was surprised. Uh, and how much I enjoyed it, you know, I, it, I didn't want to stop watching it, but the only reason I stopped watching it is because I had to go to bed, and then the next day I turned it back on when I got up, um, but yeah, definitely uh, check it out, I guess it's kind of a, a cult kind of movie, I know it has a cult following, of course, the internet nowadays, everybody can follow anything, but um, you know, yeah, definitely, definitely check this one out if you can, so that's The Loveless. And last up I have here from Arrow Video USA is the American Horror Project Volume 2 box set. And in this box set we have Dream No Evil, Dark August, and The Child. And I'm not going to like give like this big long description of them and everything. But, um, you know, basically these are like three different, you know, this is a second box set because there's an American Horror Project Volume 1. And I did review that as well, but I separated the videos. Um, you know, I reviewed each one of them in there. And the, uh, like that one, like there were ones that I liked more. Like I think it was Carnival of Chaos I, or, or Malice. I can't remember what it's called. But there's some kind of carnival movie in it that was good. And, you know, there was other two that weren't as good, you know. And it's the same one with this one for me. Dream No Evil was, was pretty good. Uh, it's about this woman who, um, you know, she's reunited with her, her father and she's part of like this like uh, traveling uh, like healer, faith healer kind of thing. And uh, her, she and the faith healer has his brother and she's supposed to marry his brother. And she was um, adopted and, you know, raised and whatever. And she never met her father so now when she's out in this area that she's in that's apparently where her father supposedly was so she decides to go look for him and you know they get reunited and then like things start to happen and she's in this like is she or isn't she in this like fantasy world so it's like kind of going back and forth between what's real and what's not and that one was that was really good that was a decent movie uh, and again I don't want to get into too much of it because I don't want to give everything away and I don't want to get too drawn out but that was good and dark august was about this it's about this guy who ends up uh he ended up killing accidentally killing this uh old man's uh granddaughter and then the old man 
puts like a curse on him puts a curse on the guy that hit the granddaughter and uh so this guy starts having like these things happen to him and he starts seeing this like dark figure so he starts uh and it's just like this small town and he uh wants to try to figure out why this is happening to him and try to get it to go away he gets the help of like his friend who has like these tarot cards and all this kind of stuff like and that one was okay the ending was kind of like eh on that one to be honest like i thought it built up uh, and then it just i didn't like the ending but i thought that one was okay and then the child i'll be honest i gotta give that another watch because it was really hard to to pay attention to it because it was I was kind of bored with it at first. I think the acting was pretty bad and it kind of threw me off. But like basically like this, this woman um, was going to another this like this person's house and there's just gonna be like a caretaker kind of person. And there's like this this child that's there and the family's kind of weird. Everybody in town knows about them and the the child is kind of weird and she's friends with like these people that nobody knows about. But um, it's kind of a vague description, but. Um, I have to give that one another watch to be honest but from what i saw it was like eh but maybe it was maybe it'll be the best one but um otherwise i would say dream no evil was my favorite one on here which one of the box sets do i like more i probably would say this one not by much though to be honest um but i think this one has more rewatchability so i couldn't say how much <laughs> But I would definitely rather watch the movies in this box set than the first one. Uh, I think these are more up my alley, I guess you could say. I would rather see, you know, Dream No Evil again. Because it's very interesting. Um, the th again, I, I'm very vague with these descriptions, but I can't give everything away. And I don't want to make just about this box another, like, hour long. But, uh, you know... But yeah, I definitely uh, enjoyed this box set for for you know most of, most of it. You know, uh, again, I gotta give the child another watch. But you know, everything looked and sounded good and very cleaned up, uh, cleaned up very nicely. Didn't give anything away, you know. But I I enjoyed it, um, and I'm glad they put out another volume. And I and I really hope they keep doing this because these are really cool, very very sturdy arrow does a, gr a great job with their box sets very sturdy box sets and uh you know so now i'll show you you know the blu-rays and the cases and the inside and everything i'll show you all that right now all right so here you go this is the front cover here and you know you got the side and like i still have this thing on you can see on the back it's like stuck on here yet and there's the the blu-rays very cool. I like I like the the, co the color and everything. Kind of reminds you of the, of the fall. And like this thing is still stuck on here. I I always kind of keep those on, at least for a while, you know. It, but when you take it off, I, I don't even know honestly know what's underneath. Maybe it's nothing, but I keep it on because like on the back it has what's on here, and it tells you what's on the contents and stuff like that. So now I'll show you what the Blu-rays look like. And there you go, you got the front cover here for Dream No Evil. This is also written and directed by John uh, Hayes. And, uh, you know, this is newly commissioned artwork from the good old Twins of Evil. You know, I always like their stuff. You know, I might not always want to put their stuff on the front, but I definitely like their stuff. Uh, Twins of Evil right there. Very cool looking colors and, and scheme there. You reverse it and you got this cover artwork here, which is the original. I like either one to be honest. This is cool and I like the newer one, so I think you can go with either one will be good, you know, to be honest. And there are the special edition contents. If you want to pause it now and check them out, you can. And there are the inside. There's no booklet or anything. This is just like a, an advertisement. And here's the Blu ray, and it is region A, B, and C. And then here we have the cover art for Dark August, uh, again by the Twins of Evil. I really like that too. I love the the artwork. I love the colors they use for this. Very, um, very fall colorish, and it is mostly in the woods. Like they have like it's not in the woods, but like it's in like a you know there's a lot of trees and stuff around. It is in the woods, but they're not. It's not in just the woods. Shut up, Tony. But anyway, you know that that's pretty cool. And you got this old artwork here. 
which I like this as well. I think, again, either one works. I think no matter what one you want to use, you know, it works fine. And being that you have the box set with all the combined ones on it, I would say you could probably just, I would probably just flip to the old one, but it's not going to hurt to have that one either. And there you have the special edition contents. If you want to check it out now and pause it, you can. And inside you have the Blu-ray and it is region A, B, and C. And there you have the cover for the child, again, Twins of Evil, uh, you know, uh, very cool. I like, I like the colors again, pictures, it's okay. It's not that bad. I think it's probably my least favorite of the ones, um, you know, of the three movies, uh, covers wise, but you know, it's still not that bad. But then you reverse it and here you got the original artwork with the child. And again, that's not that great either, but I don't know that. I don't really know which one I would pick. Uh, I'd probably, if I'm guess if I, if the other ones are both, you know, the new artwork, I'll just flip it to this one. If I have the other two of the old artwork, I'll just flip it to this one. I don't know. I kind of have to be like that. But, you know, I don't know. And there are the special edition contents. Again, pause it and check them out. And inside you have the Blu-ray, and it is region A, B, and C. You also get this booklet. It's a very, very thick booklet, you know, because it's all three movies in here. So it's got to be a thick booklet. Very nice, very hard, thick booklet. And inside, you know, about the restoration, contents, pictures. I don't want to give anything away. You know, transfer and all that. And there's the back. So yeah, I definitely think this is worth checking out. Very good box set. You know, Arrow video, quality, quality stuff. Uh, very cool, you know. It's just really good. Way better than the first volume, I think. You know, I know I went from just a little bit. But the more I'm thinking about it, like, I, I definitely like these movies way more than the first one. Um, you know, but, yeah, that's that's my opinion. I think Volume 2 is way better. And maybe Volume 3 is going to be even better than the, the first and second volume. Uh, hopefully they put one out. I think it would be stupid not to. Um, so hopefully they keep going with these. That would be awesome. Love seeing what they do. And uh, Arrow is just, you know, Arrow video is just quality, you know, good quality stuff. And especially when it comes to box sets. I, I always say that. But, like, I, you know, whether it's, like, one movie and they put, like, a bunch of things in it. Or it's, like, something like this. It's it's always, you know, good stuff. Even if the movie's crap, the quality of it and, this, you know, everything, it's, it's very good. So, Arrow video did a fantastic job with this. And I definitely think it's worth picking up. So, uh, yeah. And uh, like I said, they're all region A, B, and C, so there you go. So, yeah, that's American Horror Project Volume 2. Well, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and follow me on any one of the social media links in the description box below. If you're interested in purchasing any of these movies, I'll have links below where you can go and do that. Also, I'll have trailers if they're available below. Check them out, but like I always say, proceed with caution because there may be spoilers. Well, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.